Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take sentimental, precious family recipes that I love the ones that are written out by hand, by your mom, your grandma, your aunt, your, you know, your whatever, <laughs> your father, your grandfather, you can take those recipes and decoupage them on some of these rolling pins. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, this has been kind of a complicated project for me to figure out because I'm just sort of putting two and two together. But let me show you what's involved and then I'll tell you where I started and then we'll actually do it. Okay, um, so it's going to involve a rolling pin. I bought these new at Walmart for $4.50. 457 or something like that. They're nice rolling pins. I am planning to give one as a gift. So I wanted it to be a brand new rolling pin. Um, I am going to use Mod Podge and this is matte, but you can use whatever you want. I painted the barrel of this one and I'll show you how to do that. I have a good tip for that. I painted the barrel of this one that I'm working on uh, with two coats of Waverly White and then I have one coat of ink on the handles, which when I'm all finished, I'm going to come back and add another coat so it's solid. Um, and you need your recipes, and these are the ones that I was working with. My mom, I think when, either when I got married, or I wish I could remember, or maybe when I moved out to go off to college, um, my mom made me this little book of recipes and she took the time to handwrite all of these. So I just looked through them and picked out a few that were kind of dessert. Caramel Popcorn by Grandma Belle. Chocolate Cake by Grandma Belle. Zucchini Bread by my mom. Fudge by Grandma Belle. Cinnamon Rolls by Aunt Nancy. And banana uh, nut bread by my mom. So I just pulled those out. Okay, and um, where to start? Well, let me tell you what was the inspiration. Hey, and as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, if you like this idea, which I think you really are going to like it, um, please consider sprinkling. There's no links um, for this video. It's all stuff that you can buy at Walmart or on Amazon. Okay, so where this started for me was Christmas time this last year. And um, our son's wife, her mother, loves to throw a cookie making, cookie baking party at Christmas time where you exchange cookies. And she always makes this recipe for snickerdoodles. She has a notebook with all her recipes um, handwritten and just, I don't know, all kinds of stuff in there. And you guys, <laughs> she wrote, I don't think she'd mind me sharing this. She wrote this recipe, I think when she was in about second grade. This is a photocopy of it, but she signed it by Monica Bowman the Great. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So I made a photocopy of it and then I have fiddled and fiddled and fiddled and fiddled around with shrinking it on my copy machine to get the size that I think will work. And then I used my secret ingredient, which I fed into my printer, and I printed black and white. I'll show you this in just a second. And I printed it. And, um, my secret ingredient is tracing paper because it's pretty clear and it doesn't look clear when you're, you know, looking at it like this. But once you get it decoupaged on something, it looks pretty clear. Uh, I had a heck of a time finding tracing paper. This is Strathmore brand, um, tracing paper, smooth surface, 50 sheets, 300 series. I don't know what all of that means. I looked at some office supply stores, I looked at Walmart, Target, um, and I ended up going to Amazon and searching for tracing paper, and this is what I got. It has 50 sheets. So, I'll have it for a while. Okay. 
So that is how this whole idea started. And the first project that I have fiddled around with is kind of a flop. All right, but I learned something. And I'm gonna share that with you so you don't have to do this flop also. This is the snickerdoodle recipe that is decoupage on this wood piece from Hobby Lobby that was $3.79. Before I decoupaged it, I painted it. But what I want you to see is how bubbly and rough it is. So I probably, I won't give this to anyone because I don't think it looks good. But it was a good practice for me. And what I really want to do is put that recipe on a rolling pin, okay? So, when I was making this, I painted two coats of the white paint, let that dry. Then I put a thick coat of Mod Podge on my board, covering the whole front of it. And then I laid the tracing paper down and pressed it down the best I could using a piece of parchment paper. This is the parchment paper that you can get at Dollar Tree that I love to craft on so much. And I just kind of did this to try to push it down. And as it started to dry, it got pretty bubbly. So then I thought, hey, Remember when we were um, doing all that decoupage of paper napkins um, on little wood pieces from Dollar Tree, like on bunnies and leaves and turkeys and all kinds of things? Um, well, when we did that, we painted the wood surface, then we put the Mod Podge on the wood surface, and we let that dry. Then we laid our napkin with all the different plies pulled out, so it was the thinnest top layer on the top and I used an iron to reactivate the Mod Podge that was on the surface and that um, I thought well maybe that will work a little bit better so that's what we're going to be doing that's the best I can figure out to do this um, let me put this aside and I know I'm going to just kind of ramble around a little bit, but I want to show you a couple of things, and then we'll actually do it. Okay, so these are the rolling pins that I got. They are Mainstay brand from Walmart. They were, this was the hardest thing to get this off. <laughs> they were under $5. And, um, why not so difficult? And, okay, so the first thing I did was I wasn't going to take a posh on top of this. So, did you know that these yucky tubs, this is the tub I wash my stencils out in every day. It is perfect for painting a barrel on a rolling pin. Because you can just keep rolling, let it dry, and then roll it. So, I painted with a sponge brush two coats of white paint on the barrel and I put one coat of black on the handles and I'm gonna finish that up after we're done here. Um, okay, so then when it was dry, these are my mom's recipes. And what I did was I kind of laid them out on my copy machine and I reduced them uh, to 71%. I think because I wanted small ones that I could kind of lay down monkey wonky on my rolling pin. So then once I had this, which I think it's, let me grab it. It's probably, yeah, it's still on my printer. Once I had this, then I cut a piece of that tracing paper to this size because it's too big to fit into uh, my printer anyways. And I printed this sheet that was the final one on tracing paper. Where is it? Oh, and I cut it up. Okay, here's one. This one I had a hard time getting the tracing paper to go through well. So this, it kind of crumpled it up at the top and this one was kind of messed up. So I did another and it came out great. So then I trimmed all of these little recipes which all started out in my mom's sweet handwriting. 
And I love how she said that Grandma Belle was her mom, Aunt Nancy was her sister. I love how she said who made which recipe. And I have hung on to this little book forever. I need to put all that stuff back. Neatly. Okay. So, then I cut everything apart. And let's go for it. Let's see. I'm going to go a little bit higher and tilt my phone over a little bit. I hope I don't tip over. Okay, so this is my rolling pin. It has one coat of matte Mod Podge on it, and it is dry, okay? Fully dry. And um, these are my little pieces of my mom's whoops, recipes. I was just tough talking to my mom um, about an hour ago and she asked me what I was doing and I told her um, what I was doing and she asked me well where did you get all those recipes my mom is um, my mom has COPD and her oxygen's not great so her memory's not great either um, so she didn't remember this but after I described it to her she said she wanted to see how it turned out um, so I started with these two big recipes going winky wonky and what I did, I just want to see how do I want to lay this next one on so it won't cover up anything that I need to keep and we're going to do it with an iron. I'm not going to put my iron directly on this. I am going to put my iron over the top of a piece of parchment paper. And I have my iron set not the hottest it can go. Let's see, what is it? It's, it's medium. It is medium, <laughs> is what it says. And we're reactivating the Mod Podge that I painted on here an hour ago. And this does take some patience, but what I like about it, you can see it's starting to stick, is that it's not all bubbly and crinkly like this one. So what do you guys think? Has anyone ever done something like this? I think decoupaging the actual recipes onto a rolling pin would be hard. Um, it would be really hard. But if you can print them and reduce them to the size that you want, I printed mine all in black and white, but you can do color if that's what you want, um, on tracing paper. And then decoupaging that on a rolling pin is much easier. And you can see how it's starting to stick. Now the thing I'm kind of afraid of is um, this is going to have to be sealed. And obviously you guys, I'm sure you figured this out. If you're if you craft. This is a decorative piece. I'm going to keep it for my house. It is not meant to be used to roll up cookie dough or anything else. It is purely for decoration. Um, but I'm going to want to cover it just to kind of seal all of that in. And I'm going to try a very, very light coat of Mod Podge uh, with a brush. And then if this does not work, then I will use this. Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Clear Matte Clear Spray Sealer. That would probably work too. Um, Anyways, so this is the project. Let me just get this one down 
It takes a little bit of patience and you have to keep looking at it to see where is it not sticking. When I see a spot that it's not going to want to stick because it's overlapping the recipe before that. So I'm going to have to put some Mod Podge on that. And I'll tell you how I plan to hang it. I don't know where I'll hang it. I do have this beautiful basket in my kitchen that's filled with rolling pins. So I could use that. starting to stick and there's going to be a few areas where it overlaps another recipe that I'm going to have to come back and add a little bit more uh, you know my podge And I do want them all facing the same direction, so I am going to be careful <laughs> that I don't iron one of my recipes on upside down. Oh, Susie says that she has her mother-in-law's beautiful file. You know what? Um, I am so sentimental. And, I don't know, if you guys would pray for my mom, she's just not doing good. Not remembering things. Oh gosh. Anyway, so I am just super sentimental. I always have been. I have I have you know all the photos of both sides of my family, my my side and my husband's side. I'm the one that did all the genealogy, um, and I I love things that have a history that are not you know manufactured <laughs> in a factory. Uh, so I think this is sweet. Tell me in the comments. Okay, um, let's see. Artina Dottie says that she'd be afraid that the Mod Podge would smear it. She would use the spray. Ooh, that's good advice. I am going to have to come back in some areas and put a little Mod Podge underneath the corners. Uh, because, like here because um, there's no Mod Podge for, to reactivate in the areas where it's overlapping another little recipe. Okay, what do we have room still to do? I could cut these a little bit slimmer. I didn't know how big. I was just guessing when I reduced all this 71%. Um, so tell me in the comments if you are sentimental and if you have like your mom or your grandma's recipes. I would love to know. This one is by my grandma Bell. Oh. Let's see, that's not going to fit there. Let's put Grandma Bell's right here. Is that going to work? Yes, I'm going to make that work. I love these little recipe cards that have like broccoli and all kinds of funny things on them. And you could do this exact exact same idea on a flat wood sign. It does not have to be a rolling pin. Um, I just wanted to do rolling pins today. And did you see the video that I shared this morning of a whole bunch of rolling pins? It's a video that I made when I was still pretty new. It was um, summer of 2020, so almost three years ago. Anyways, um, yeah, I had some fun recipes. Fun rolling pin, sorry. Yeah, I have quite a few areas where I'm going to need to add some Mod Podge. Uh, but I have one recipe left. Let's see if we can 
squeeze it in right here. Make it smaller. This is my mom's uh, banana nut bread, which, oh my gosh, she makes great zucchini bread too. Although I don't think she's done that in years. But that was like one of my favorite things for her to make. Just checking to make sure that I'm not covering anything else up. Okay, that's going to work. So, you guys tell me. Um, this is a really neat project, Jenny. Um, we're decoupaging using an iron and Mod Podge and some tracing paper. I'll go back over the recipe. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna start calling my list of project supplies, recipes. Um, I'll go over the recipe for this project again at the very end, but uh, you can watch this on replay. And, um, you know, maybe it will get your uh, creative juices flowing and you'll think of other ideas, which I want to hear them if you do. Cynthia says she has her grandmother's books. And she has her grandmother's recipe books and she wouldn't take anything in the world for them. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, So what I want to know from my expert crafters out there, what do you guys think? Do you think that if I put another coat, I am going to have to put some coat on, some Mod Podge on here to fix the spots where it's not adhering because it's overlapping. But do you um, think that if I did a, another coat of this over the top that it would wreck it? Um, or do you think that would be okay? So the, the way, one way that you can hang this is um, just with a piece of jute or ribbon through either end. You can also hang these like this with jute through these holes on either end. Or you can wrap jute around right here or a ribbon and hang it that way. Or you can just display it in a pretty crock or something like that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need to uh, do a little bit more. So, just to repeat, um, this is a rolling pin from Walmart. It was less than $5. This is Mod Podge. I painted white on the barrel, and this is that Waverly Craft paint that I love so much from Walmart, and black on the handles, and this one needs another coat of black on it. Um, and then I fiddled around with my mom's recipes on our printer until I got them all on one sheet. Then I put, we do have to trim this a little bit because it's going to be too big to go into most printers, I think. Um, I copied in black and white this in my own printer on a piece of tracing paper. And after I had painted the barrel, I, um, you, I put a coat of Mod Podge on. And we're just reactivating that using my iron. And that's it. That's all I did. So what do you guys think? Who's going to do it? Who, um, who has their mom, grandma, aunt, sister, father? Who has their family, old family recipes that you would like to do something with? You put it from both hand, uh, handles to hang it, Artina says. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. But not all rolling pins have 
the holes on both handles. For example, here's a couple that I have. Um, I always buy them when I see them at thrift stores, um, but they're not really in good enough shape. So I went on the hunt for some new ones. Um, but these don't have holes in the handles, so you'd have to do it right here. Just a loop right over the barrel. Okay, well, I am excited to sit down and see what everyone is saying. Do a this or a this. That's a thumb or a heart. If you like this project, like the concept of it, think that it's something that you might want to try. Um, if you do try it, I definitely want to see your pictures. Um, you can post those over in that free group that I set up for all of us to share our craft projects. It's dreamy space DIY. If you haven't joined that yet, be sure to answer the questions um, because my admin can't admit you to the um, group unless you do. So, um, so join the group, share pictures of what you make with your recipes so that everyone can get inspired. Um, if you haven't already liked and followed this page, please do turn on your notifications. Thank you so much for the stars. I completely missed that. I was so concentrating on my rolling pin, uh, but I appreciate that. That's very helpful to me. Yeah, this would be a great Christmas gift. And this was the one, in case you missed the beginning, this was the one that was the, uh-oh, I learned something for this. I don't know if it's because this is tracing paper or what, but I had painted this wood surface, two coats. I sanded it really good. Then I put Mod Podge on the front and I laid the recipe on it while it was wet. And I attempted to smoosh it out. And this is what I got. It's very rough and bubbly. And so I learned something that I would not do this method again, and that is what inspired me to try the ironing method for this project. Oh, lots of you guys are saying that you plan to make something like this. Oh, yeah. Um, a memory pin. Hmm. A memory rolling pin, yeah. Oh, I love that, Susie. You could do the same idea on an apron but you would want to use the Mod Podge that is designed for fabric. And the only thing about that is that I have some in my cabinet somewhere. Here it is. It takes a long time to cure. So, um, but anyways, I would use, make sure you're using the right kind of Mod Podge but I think putting it on an uh, apron would be really sweet, too. <sighs> um, oh, Jean says she doesn't iron anymore until it's fully dry. Well, let's try. Because mine is fully dry at this point. I don't have enough room here. I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper to protect my iron. Mod Podge on the top, and I think that is probably also part of the problem. Yeah, it's not getting any smoother. But maybe if I had done the other method where you paint your Mod Podge on, you let that dry fully, and it's dry. Then you lay your whatever it is, a napkin, a piece of paper, a piece of tracing paper, on the top, and you use an iron on medium and a piece of parchment paper to essentially reactivate that dry Mod Podge that's on your surface. And then you can seal it either with some of this clear matte sealer spray, or you can use a gloss if you want a gloss. Or you can try, I'm gonna try just one little test area to use Mod Podge on my rolling pin to see what happens. And I will let you guys know. Alrighty, well, I have talked long enough. I hope you like this project. Um, I know my samples are not the 
I mean, I'm sure you can come up with something that's a hundred times prettier and better, but really my goal here at DIY Dreaming is not to always make the most fabulous projects. It's to do a project, show you how you can do it, and inspire you to do it in your colors and your style. Um, so I'm not doing my projects here to be the best, but really just to, I should have been a teacher, but to do that kind of thing, to teach people how to do the kind of things that I love to do and inspire you. Yes, I did use parchment paper. Thank you, Susie. You're so good to me always answering people's questions for me. Okay, well, you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching. When I have this all figured out and finished and painted, and I'll probably add a black and white bow of some sort, I will get pictures. I'm not promising that that will be today, though. Um, I'll get pictures, and I will put them here in these comments. I will also put them just on this page, DIY Dream. Alrighty. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. If I can turn it off.